Hi everybody, it's Emily here and today is day 83 of the Odin Project and I am currently exactly halfway through the JavaScript course. Now I was sick for the past week and so I did take some time off coding and I didn't make any videos but I'm excited to share with you what I've done since the last video and I am feeling better and I'm excited to get back into coding. So with that, I will go ahead and jump in where I left off at the end of my last video, which is with a code quiz on recursion. So this is from the website codingame.com. There were nine questions that all had to do with writing recursive functions. And they sort of went from easy to hard in succession. So for example, the first question was creating a function called sum range where it takes a number as an input and then it returns the sum of all of the numbers that it takes to count from one until you reach that number. And so my solution here is to the right where basically you take n and then for our base case, if n is less than or equal to zero, then you return zero, but otherwise return n plus some range of n minus one. So for example, if you have some range of five, then 5 is greater than 0, so you bypass the base case. You return 5 plus some range of 4, which is 5 minus 1, which would then give you return 4 plus some range of 3, which would be return 3 plus some range of 2, etc., until you reach 0, where it returns 0. And then it basically returns the sum of all of those as you're adding 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 plus 0. So these were pretty fun, actually. They were like little puzzles in a way. Uh, I did get pretty tripped up toward the end. Once it started getting into nested objects, like you'll see here, where you had to search the object to see if it contained specific values. Uh, and then there was also multi-dimensional array. Those got super complicated and they just took me a pretty long time to complete. And I remember when I was doing those, I was talking it through with Cody a lot just to try to figure them out. Um, but I was able to complete them. And my routine with completing them was that I wanted to complete it 100% myself um, without looking at their solution. And then once I completed it, I would go through their solution to understand how they achieved it. And for most of the solutions, their code was a lot shorter than mine, naturally, since this is my first time encountering these. Um, but it's always nice to kind of go through and make sure you understand how they are doing it because you can see some good opportunities to improve your code and maybe write things in a more elegant way. So once I completed the code quiz, then I moved on to the recursion project. Now with this project, there was actually a warm up with the Fibonacci sequence and they had you write a function two different ways. And so the function would take a number and then it returns an array containing that many numbers from the Fibonacci sequence. And so you wrote the function first using an iterative method and then you rewrote the function using a recursive method. And so I have my solutions here to the right. The iterative method did not take me that long to come up with. And again, my code's a little probably longer than it needs to be, but I was able to figure out a decent solution for returning the correct array. But then doing the <laughs> recursive function, this also took me so long. I, I think I was stuck on this for like two or three days trying to get this recursive Fibonacci function solution. I think you can actually solve this with just one line of code, but I'm happy with my solution and I was happy I was able to get there eventually. And again, these were also pretty fun. Like, it's like frustrating, but fun. So after you complete the Fibonacci warm up, then you start the merge sort project. So merge sort is an algorithm where you take an array that is unsorted and then you split it 
equally into two parts. So then you have a left side and a right side. And then each of those subarrays, you keep recursively breaking those into two parts. So you have a left side, left, left side, right side, left side, right side, and keep breaking down those arrays until you have a subarray that just has one number in it. And then once you do that, you use those one item arrays and compare them and then you rebuild the array by sorting those numbers. So as you're kind of working backwards then to sort each of these subarrays, then you end up having two subarrays of the original array, the left side and the right side, and each of those are sorted and then you merge those back together to create a sorted array. That was not the best explanation. The Odin Project links to a lot of really good videos that have a visual explanation of it, um, but it's a pretty cool algorithm. And so we were supposed to write a function that does just that. And this took me a really long time too. I was able to figure out pretty quickly how to do the recursive splitting of the arrays into subarrays. And then your base case is going to be if your array only contains one element, then you return that array. And I was even able to figure out like the sorting of the subarrays to a certain extent, but I kept running into this issue of trying to come up with my return array. Like when you're merging the arrays once they're sorted. And my issue is that I couldn't like define a new empty array to be my result and then push the sorted numbers into that because with it being a recursive function, every single time it runs, it just redefines that result variable back to an empty array. So that wasn't working. And then I was trying to set my result equal to one of the sub arrays. So I set my result equal to the left hand side sub array. And then I would iterate over the numbers there and try to compare them to the numbers from my other sub array. But the issue was that the result was linked with that left sub array. And so the array was changing as I was iterating over it. So obviously that did not work either. And then finally, after talking through some different ideas with Cody, I realized that I could write a separate like helper function within this function. And so I did just that. I created a helper function for merging, which would take two arrays that are sorted and then merge them into a single array. And so this is what my solution ended up being here on the right hand side where I have my base case of if the array contains only one element, then return the array. Otherwise, I oops, set a variable for left and right, and that's just the left-hand side of the array and the right-hand side of the array into two subarrays. And then I use recursion to basically run each of those subarrays back through the function so that it keeps reducing them and reducing them into their respective subarrays. And then I define my merge function here where I'm able to set a result variable to an empty array. And then I have some logic here for if either of the arrays are undefined, then to return the other array. And then this is the where it got pretty interesting with the merging. So I had three iterative loops going where I had i, j, and k all equal to zero. And so the i variable represents the index of the first array. The j variable represents the index of the second array. And then the k variable represents the index of my result array. And so while k is less than the length of both arrays combined, 
which should be the length of my result array, then if the variable at index i of the first array is less than the variable at index j of the second array, then you would push the smaller variable into the result array. And then the opposite is true if the variable from the second array is smaller than the variable from the first array, then we would push the variable from the second array into our result variable. And then I also put in some logic here where if one of the variables was undefined, then to push the other one. And then you return your result at the end, and then at the very end of this whole function, I return the merging of left and right. And that is my merge sort function. And after completing that project, then I moved on to common data structures and algorithms. So in this lesson, they have a basic overview again of data structures and algorithms. Data structures just being a way to organize your data so that you can complete whatever specific tasks that you want to complete. And then algorithms are sets of instructions for completing a specific task, such as finding a certain piece of data that is saved within a data structure. The assignments for this lesson were pretty much all videos except for two of them. Uh, one was a Wikipedia article and one was just like a blog post. But I loved all of these videos. They were all very interesting. And it was content that I had not really been exposed to before. They kind of went in depth with like binary search trees and we learned about breadth first search and depth first search and the differences between stacks and queues. And I just, I really liked all the videos that they linked here. Um, so it was a pretty good lesson. And I think it was setting us up well for the next couple of projects that are ahead. So today I also started the linked list project, which I haven't actually started the project yet. I'm still just working my way through the linked list resources. But that is pretty much where I left off today. And so tomorrow I will be diving into this linked list project. That is all that I have for today. So thank you so much for tuning in. Please be sure to hit the like button if you enjoy the updates and subscribe if you'd like to follow along on my journey and Cody's journey in web development. And let me know about your own coding journey in the comments below. Have a great day.